What's up, everybody? This is Darren from cleftonegrooves.com. Uh, why do I sound so far away? Uh, hello? Hey! Hey! Are you guys hearing this right now? What's up, everybody? This is Darren from cleftonegrooves.com. I guess you're wondering, what are we going to talk about today? Well, how about the importance of why we use a separate, dedicated microphone to capture audio for your videos rather than using the onboard microphone on your camera to do that very same function? And then also later on, we're going to talk about, too, how we can take our sound quality even further with the microphones that we already have. So going back to that first point, separate, dedicated microphones. One reason that we do that is think back to the beginning of my video. Didn't it sound like I was clear across the room? Yeah, you don't want that. Remember last week we talked about controlling our environment, deadening the sound, fighting those echoes and that reverb that might be coming from around your room and bouncing back into your microphone. Well, guess what you do when you use the microphone on your camera, which is halfway across the room? You lessen your sound because the microphone's too far away to pick you up, but then the sound that's bouncing around the room is also getting picked up way more than it would be if you instead of if you had a microphone attached to you. So that's one reason that we do that, right? For better sound quality. The louder you can get your signal yourself into the microphone over any other stray reflections that you might hear in the room, uh, the better chance you're going to have for better audio. Uh, now, another reason that we do that, that we use a, a separate microphone is because cameras well, they're cameras, they're made for shooting video. So if they have an onboard microphone, that microphone is not going to be dedicated to getting you the best possible audio that you can get. So again, if you're shooting video, one of the better microphones for you to have is a shotgun microphone. And it works really well in controlled environments such as like what I'm in right here. A shotgun microphone is definitely a way to go to get really good sound quality. Now in uh, situations where you might be like a one-man crew. Maybe you're at a conference and you're interviewing somebody. Well, again, don't just settle for that microphone on your, your camera or on your cell phone or whatever it is you're using. Did you know that they make lavalier microphones that plug right into your cell phone? Now, that's about the only time I would recommend using one of those. But I will say, if you're a one-man band, you're having to be in the video and you're having to interview somebody in the video and you're also trying to manage to hold the camera and all that at the same time man go out you get go out there get yourself a selfie stick hold that camera up and have a lavalier microphone with a long cable on it that you can plug in and then use that lavalier microphone to capture your sound for that video that way you get better sound quality right and then if you are interviewing somebody, depending on what side of you that they're standing on, put that lavalier microphone on the same side so you can pick up the audio from them. Isn't that awesome? Yeah, think about that. So that's one way that you can use a, a lavalier microphone. Now, I was talking about some ways that you can get some better sound out of your microphone. So in particular, uh, for lavalier microphones, I would always highly recommend a windscreen. Now, all microphones come with, or don't come with, but you can get windscreens for just about any microphone that you have. But especially if you're going to use a lavalier microphone, you want to get a windscreen because let's say I put one here on my lapel jacket and I turn my head this way to talk to somebody. Now, if I say a word that has a, a certain plosive in it, like a, a, word, a P word or a, a word that has a B in it, well, what happens when I turn this way, or I say the B word or whatever it is, it's going to overdrive that microphone, that air, that burst of air is going to be very noticeable in that lapel microphone. So definitely, you want to get you a windscreen for your lavalier microphone. That will go a long way in keeping those nasty pop noises out of your lavalier microphone. Now, you also could do that as far as having a windscreen for other microphones. Another really good one I would recommend uh, having a, a windscreen for is a condenser microphone. Now, in my previous videos where you saw half my face was hidden uh, behind that black uh, shield, that was a windscreen. Most of you probably already know that. But those windscreens do the same function as what was on that lavalier microphone. Keep those plosives from bursting that, that air onto the diaphragm of that microphone. Keeps your audio nice and clean. Um, so now, one other way that you can take your audio a little bit further and keep your quality 
Well, have you ever been talking and you have and you're you're talking into a microphone stand or a microphone and it's on a stand and you accidentally bump the stand? Well, now you got to do that take all over again, right? Because you hit the stand, the energy from that bump travels through the stand and into the microphone. Well, that's most likely because you had a hard plastic piece that the microphone was attached to that was screwed onto the stand. Well, they make these things that are really awesome called shock mounts. And I have an example of one here. This one happens to be what I use for my shotgun microphones and it slips right in here. And essentially what these are here are rubber bands. And these rubber bands, obviously, like rubber bands, are very stretchy. Um, they, they stretch, they bend. So they suspend the microphone in air and further isolate it away from your environment by absorbing some of those shocks in case you accidentally hit your microphone stand. It's a wonderful, wonderful tool to have in your kit. Um, they also make those same things for condenser microphones. You've probably seen them. Um, I forgot mine today, so I can't show you, but I'll, I'll put up a picture uh, as I edit this video and I'll show you exactly what I'm talking about. But those shock mounts, again, they take away some of that impact, if not all of the impact, from when you accidentally bump your stand. It's a, a wonderful thing. I, can't, I cannot preach to have one of these enough uh, if you're going to do any kind of audio at home. Um, and then the other cool thing about that is, let's say there's some kind of low energy rumble uh, in your, your area. Maybe somebody starts their car outside of your, your house or something. Well, normally that energy, again, where does it go? It goes through the floor, through your microphone stand, right into your microphone. Well, I'm not saying that these uh, shock mounts will get rid of every sort of noise or energy from uh, whatever the stand may be touching and, and ultimately what the microphone is touching, but it will certainly lessen the impact where you might still be able to work with that audio, therefore saving you extra takes. So that's what I've got for you this week, folks. And uh, I, what I want you to do is stay tuned next week for another special trick, another special tip of mine. And that is recording your audio separately from your video. Why would I want to do that? Why would you want to do that? Well, come back next week and you'll find out. All right, guys, have a good weekend, and here's to getting better audio at home.